Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. And I pray the Spirit of God will do a work in your heart today by His Word that will be forever in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Join me right now as we call for that daily bread. I want you to release your faith. Are you ready? Say with me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, the Lord says it's time. And I've been telling you about alignment this month. This is a special month. This month of May is a special month month i'm telling you the truth now you should expect things from the lord let me read this scripture to you thank you holy spirit psalm 126 and verse 1 it says when the lord brought back the captives when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Now, why, why did he say we were like those who dream? Because we're not expecting it at that time. We may have given up at that time. We may have given up. Then the Lord suddenly shows up. And he, he just turns things around. You know, imagine if someone have told you, or doctors have told you, you can never take in. Now, because of your natural body, they can look at their, their equipment and, and do all their scan and tell you, oh, this is what we see. Yes. But you see, because you are from Zion, there are aspects of your life that can, can never see. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. They are real, but they cannot be seen. The machine that can see them have not been invented yet. Think about it. Ultrasound machine was not always there, but today it is there. So today it helps to explain certain things. So imagine people who could have been saved before the ultrasound machine was invented. Imagine people who died by little things that they could have easily have taken care of. If only they could see, but they couldn't see. Now it is the same thing today. Praise God. But now here's the point. Now, the doctors have said you can never take in or you can never carry a child. Yes, whatever they have said. Then suddenly, suddenly, you discover you're pregnant. And you are not even thinking about it. You, you, you've so believed the doctors right now. And then you're just like, what is it? So, I mean, let me just live my life and cope with it. Maybe you're going to adopt. Maybe. And then suddenly, you, you just realize your body is behaving somehow. Like, what's going on here? He said, let's go to the doctor. And I go to the doctor and say, um, ask you if you, he said, let's run, run, run several tests. And then the test result comes that you're pregnant. Like, pray what? Yes, you're pregnant. How? I thought I was told. Yeah, well, we don't know how, but that's it from our results you are pregnant huh no let's just check another hospital maybe this guy just wants to tell us something to make us happy and everywhere you go to the same result you are pregnant now you're wondering how see that's what he meant here when the lord turned when the lord brought back the captivity of zion it was like a dream <laughs> it was like a dream like how? 
Now, that's the kind of things God is going to be doing in your life. This month is a special month because there's so much alignment. You know, each day I come on this broadcast, I just, I just see so clearly that things are going to happen this month that will amaze you. Wow. Praise God. Psalm 135. Let me, let me show you. Psalm 134. Psalm 134. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Bredisha Katabaya. Verse 3. It says, The Lord, hallelujah, who made heaven and earth, Bless you from Zion. It's a prayer. David was praying here. Thank you, Jesus. What a prayer. You, know, you will not understand what this prayer is. Now I'll start to tell you something like this on Monday and Tuesday. David prayed that prayer. says, the Lord who made heaven and earth. <laughs> he now says, he didn't say bless you from heaven. He didn't say bless you from the earth. He says, bless you from Zion. I told you the kind of blessings you should be looking out for this month is the blessing that comes from Zion. The thing about the blessing from Zion is this, and I want you to listen attentively. It's not something you can explain. No, it's not. It's not something. It's not something you can say you worked for. It's not something. You know, sometimes people have a hard time believing that God does things like this. Because people feel everything God can do has to be connected somehow. Yes. Majorly, when it has to do with this world. But when God wants to bless you out of Zion, I will explain to you. So here's Jesus. He was about to go to Jerusalem. So he told his disciples, let's come. Go into the city, into such and such street. You will see a donkey tied that no one has ever ridden on. Losing it. If anyone asks you for it, it says, tell them the Lord has need of it and they will let him. So, okay, sir. So they went exactly where Jesus told them to go. And they found this donkey that was tied. And then they began to lose it. And people came and said, hey, what are you doing? The Lord has need of it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. You can't take it. And then they brought it to Jesus. Now you want to ask, what happened there? What happened there? Did Jesus do them magic? No! <laughs> this is the truth. That donkey was kept there for the Lord. So how do you mean that donkey was kept there from the Lord? It was someone's tithe. Go read about tithe. So Moses had instructed the people that there is the tithe that you bring and keep at your gates. See that now? So that donkey, the reason no one has ever ridden on it was because right from when that donkey was small, it was kept as God's tithe. Now, when it got to the time of... Now, Matthew lets us know that it was not one donkey. There were two. So now, when it was time... And Jesus, it has been written, Abu Sebradi, it has been written concerning Jesus that he would go into Jerusalem riding on an ass. 
Jesus is not going to take any man's ass. He's not going to take any man's donkey. So he began to, now, now like Koboro Feida, because it was written, God had to make provision for it. I want you to listen and listen good. So Jesus began to know from the mind of God, I'm supposed to go to Jerusalem. Yes. Am I supposed to walk? No. You're supposed to ride on an ass. So where's the ass? I have kept it at so so and so place for you. Okay. Hey guys, go to so so and so. Not because Jesus had negotiated with the man before. No. So here, donkey kept there. Jesus sending his servant to go there. They would see the donkey and then they should bring it for him. Now, the owner of that donkey didn't even know he was doing Jesus a favor. You see that now? So he cannot boast and say, I gave Jesus my donkey. No, sir. It wasn't yours. It was God's. See, that's God blessing Jesus out of Zion. So it took a Zion principle for that blessing to come to Jesus. And Jesus had the ability to locate where the blessing is for it to come down to him. You see, as God's children, when you want to receive blessings from Zion, there are things you need to be conscious about. I was, I was sharing in, in our fellowship recently, and I, and I said something to them. I said, listen, when you walk into a place, maybe you want to do something, maybe uh, it's a train station, you need to buy tickets, or in a banking hall, you, you know, where you have several counters. So when you walk into a place like that, don't just rush to the next available person. The moment you enter, scan the place. And what are you looking for? There is someone, because you didn't get there by chance, there is someone whom God have placed that day for your sake in that place. It is your job to locate the person. Oh, yeah. And if you look, you remember Jesus said, you know, when he sent his disciples out, he says, when you go into a house, the first thing he says, peace be unto this house. And then he says, if the son of peace is in that house, your peace will remain. So how do you locate the son of peace? How do you know the son of peace is in that house? He says, you will know. There will be a connection. There will be something. So you get to this place and then you're looking. There, there will be a calling. There will be someone that, that you will just know. That I think I'm connected to this person. Now that's how you begin to keep your mind and your eyes in the blessing that comes from Zion. So Jesus began to know. Jesus knew that there is something God has prepared for me in this season. And that's one thing you should be conscious of. I didn't just get here by chance. It is time for me to pay my bills. It is time for me to, to whatever thing it is. So what should you do? Begin to look for the provision that your father have made already. If that is how your mind works, then it will be easy for you to hear the voice of God tell you, go to so and so street, you will find this. Go to so and so place. And when you find them, you will realize that it has been kept there for you. And that's how we receive blessings with honor, not in dishonor. So when David said, may God bless you, he says, says, the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. What's he talking about? 
He is not talking about the kind of blessing that someone will give you and tomorrow boast about it and say, hey, I'm the one that gave him his first car. I'm the one that gave him his this. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the kind of blessings that people will even bless you without knowing that they are blessing you. Some of them will come under so much command from God, like, I want you to do this for this person. Why? They may grumble, but they will do it because they have to obey God. So even the person knows that it's not that I'm giving you this thing because I think you're special. But I'm under command from heaven. Yeah. People will be commanded to do things for you. You will go to apply for a job and someone will just come and say, sorry, who is so, so, and so person? Say, yeah, I'm the one. Follow me. I should follow you. Yeah. Say, okay. What are we going to? Just follow me. So it's like, I had a dream last night and I saw your name. That's why I came to ask you. You are the one we need. Huh? But you don't know me, sir. Yeah, I don't have to know you. But God have revealed to me. You are the one we need. Just like that. Yeah. So you see, he's not employing you. Of course, you're qualified for the job. Praise God. But he's not employing you because of your qualification. He's employing you because Zion have shouted your name. Mm. You don't know that somebody can be in his house and hear your name. I said, do such and such to that person. You don't know those things exist. Oh, you think everything is just according to the world system. I told you that is unrighteous man. If Jesus had gone to pay for an ass to use, it would have been an unrighteous mammon. That transaction would have been unrighteous. See that now? So, God, I pray you understand these things. You remember Jonah? I, 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 I had a preacher preach this many years ago. Hmm. You know, when, when, when God sent Jonah to Nineveh and he wanted to deliberately disobey God. So he went to board a ship to touch it. And the Bible specifically said he paid his faith. Now it's funny when the Bible said he paid his faith. As though was he not supposed to pay his faith before. Now, but but see, I had a preacher preach this many years ago, and, and it makes perfect sense. So the preacher said, Did you notice that he paid his faith? Now, if he was going where God commanded him to go, he wouldn't have paid his faith. Probably. Now, now, when did the Bible say he paid? Remember, <laughs> the Bible says all these things are written for our learning. So why would the writer write he paid his fare? I said that was the first time somebody is traveling and paying fare. But that was for a reason. He paid his fare. And when he decided to obey God, you know, when the trouble broke out, and they threw him, told them, throw me. He was the one that told them, throw me into the sea. Now, he, he wasn't committing suicide. He knew he wasn't going to die. Oh, he, go and read that story. He knew he wasn't going to die. He knew God was going to say. He knew. Jonah, and now that's the funny thing. Jonah understood God perfectly. And he was working with God based on that understanding. So when he says, throw me into the, into the sea, they threw him into the sea. And then the, the, the big whale came and the big fish came and swallowed him. And he didn't have to pay, transported him to where he was going to. <laughs> it's God. So God blessed Jonah out of sight. Now that's not the kind of blessing you want to receive. Praise <laughs> God. But you see, because he repented, he actually repented. And God transported him to where he was going to, free of charge. And my time is up. Praise <laughs> God. Ah, may God bless you today out of Zion. 
in Jesus' name. Amen.